Hello, everyone. You're good. Sorry that we're starting a little late here. I uh, had some technical issues with Zoom. I think Zoom's getting a little busy these days. Um, hello, my name is Alex Ladd. I'm the CEO of Mindstream Analytics. And today, I just wanted to go through NetSuite planning and budgeting. Um, I think in today's, the title of this is Create New Versions of Your Forecast Faster. But uh, I think right now, I'm not sure how everyone else is feeling, but uh, it's pretty uncertain times. And because of that, um, I know we're all forecasting fervently. Um, a little bit about Mindstream. We were founded in 2009. Uh, we are solely an EPM and BI solutions uh, consulting implementation and managed services firm. We are headquartered in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, we average around 13 years of experience for our consultants. Um, our managed services organization and our consulting organization are SOC 1 Type 2 certified. So um, we go through a lot of process and procedures to make sure we maintain that. Uh, again, as I mentioned, we have a pretty, pretty broad portfolio, uh, complete life cycle around performance management, consulting, managed services, uh, advisory around, around selection, uh, process, data governance, all kinds of things, and BI analytics, all kinds of things. Uh, we've, we've been recognized, thankfully, by a lot of people for our, for our work. Uh, we've been on the IN 5000 list. Uh, we've been on the MSP Mentor Managed Services list since 2016, I believe. Uh, one of the things about our managed services thing here is the fall of sun coverage. And, and goes around the globe. So if you need 24 hour coverage, we can provide that. Uh, so getting into agenda today, I was just gonna talk a little bit about kind of the current situation. And then I was gonna talk about how NetSuite planning and budgeting can help. Um, there's some examples of, of how I think it can help right now is um, segregate your customers differently, meld forecasts, uh, reforecast cash or your, or your reforecast your P&L. Um, and we'll try and get as far as we can today. Uh, but really, this is mostly going to be working in the tool. Um, I only have this slide and one more. So that's where we're almost done with the PowerPoint. Um, but you know, where we are right now is I, I don't know what everyone else is doing right now in this time of, of kind of immense uncertainty or the time of COVID-19. But one of the things that we're doing internally, and I, I would imagine that we are not the only ones. Um, you know, I, we're regrouping our customers into different risk pools um, because it's going to have an impact on future work as well as potentially um, your AR. Uh, so, you know, we're looking at this as, you know, how, what are our customers' industries? Are they essential, non-essential? Are they open, not open? Are they the type of business that's going to rebound quickly or not? Things of that nature, because that's going to provide a lot of insight into their relationship with us. Um, we are reforecasting constantly. Uh, I'd love to say that, you know, oh, we know what's going to happen, but we don't. Um, we're reforecasting right now once a day. I would imagine most other people are probably trying to do that as quickly as, as possible, uh, depending on how complex your forecast is. Uh, it may limit how fast you can reforecast, but I know that everybody would like to be reforecasting almost hourly. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we can all do that. And sometimes there's not even data to do that with, but uh, I know that things are changing rapidly. Um, you know, some of the assumptions that you're constantly changing, you know, how, what's your DSO going to be today? Are, you know, is it going up? Or, you know, is it, is it, what is it going to be? Um, and then kind of scenario modeling has become an increased importance. Um, you know, some people call it war gaming. Well, um, if, if, you know, if this is, this is about as close to that as you can get, right. I mean, um, what, what does our cash flow look like in different scenarios? What is our, 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 sales forecast look like um, and that's changing every day right so in these times it's important to be able to to get as most if there's any time where you're going to realize the value of a tool like netsuite pv it's going to be right now right so here's some of the things we're we can we're going to walk through today some different examples of how to do certain things um, some of these things you know aren't things that you're always looking at when you're when you're doing your implementation or you're if you're in a sales cycle for for you know thinking about purchasing a planning and budgeting solution you know these are things that um, in any other times 
you know, you might not look at this or weight this functionality heavily, uh, or, you know, or if you're already an existing user, this might've been something you never utilized because it's outside your kind of your comfort zone or whatnot. But, um, you know, I think we can all agree if on one thing about today, and that is, uh, I think we're all outside our comfort zones right now, right? So, so um, you know, might as well learn something new. So um, here are a couple examples that we'll walk through. Um, we're, I'm going to talk about regrouping risk pools. I, I don't know if that's really even the right verbiage, but uh, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Uh, you know, I'm going to, my example is going to be around customers. Um, you could do this with all kinds of different things. Um, you could do this with products if you have, a, you know, if all of a sudden your supply chain is, is falling down. You could do this with, obviously, with customers. You could do this with vendors, uh, anything, you know. Um, it might be worth it to do it with all of them. Anyway, um, but we'll, I'll show you a couple different ways we can go about that, right? We can do, um, you know, mix and matching of different scenarios based on some of these regroupings is really important. So regrouping things and looking at what's risky, what's not is one one part of the exercise, but being able to then pull different forecasts together based on different risk assumptions, that's really powerful, uh, you know, and, and it's really needed right now. So let's talk about that a little bit and we'll walk through that. Um, the, you know, the assumptions constantly changing. Are you resetting your drivers? You know, yes, I can do that, but I don't want to lose my original forecast. That's fine. Let's, let's walk through all of that and how you can do that. Um, you know, the other thing is scenario modeling. Um, obviously, all of this kind of drives into scenario modeling, right? What, we all want to know what the different scenario is going to look like tomorrow. Um, you know, you may have three or four different out potential outcomes today, and tomorrow they're all going to be different. So what's the best way to manage that and, and move forward? Uh, one thing I do have is I put together a little calculation. If you want to make across-the-board calculations at NetSuite PB, um, I'll, put, I'll put that together. Um, I can be, it can be exported and import it into your app if you want. Um, if you're interested in that, I have an email at the end of this. And it, you know, this is obviously free of charge. Just ask us and we'll send it to you. If you have questions, we'll, we'll send uh, how to import it, et cetera. Uh, but it's just something that you know, I think is highly useful for people. And depending on how advanced a user or uh, of the system you are, you may or may not you know, wanna take advantage of this. But uh, with that said, I'm just gonna jump into our, uh, our demonstration. Um, you know, in case you haven't realized this, my goal today really is to teach people how to get the most out of this. So these are our examples. I will walk through them. I'm gonna try and leave an, hopefully an enormous time at the end for question and answers if you have questions about this. If there are certain pieces of this that you see that you'd like further instructions on or whatnot, please email me. Um, I'm happy to send you the instructions on how we did something. Uh, if there's enough interest from people, I'm happy to set up just uh, Q and A sessions about how to walk through something, and we can just walk through it repeatedly until everybody gets it, or whatever the question is. Um, my goal this today's not today's not about. Um, anything except um, helping people use the tool better, all right? So uh, let me just switch over to our, our, NetSuite, our NetSuite planning and budgeting instance that we'll be talking through today. Um, sorry, my Zoom skills are not quite as good as they should be, even after days of using it almost unendingly. But here we are. So this is our this is our NetSuite EPM Cloud instance. Uh, I'm logged in today as Tommy Smith. He was nice enough to lend me his user ID today. So uh, I'm gonna go through it with that. But this is really, um, I don't know everybody that's on the phone today, but uh, if you are a customer that has bought the NetSuite Suite Success application, either starter or core, the things I'm gonna show you today should be easily uh, translatable to your application. Um, these are things that you can, in, you know, create and 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 put into your application or modify your application, if you will, to take advantage of very quickly. If not, uh, some of you might not even need to modify it at all. Um, and I'll walk through kind of the modifications I made. So one of the things I want to start with today is really around um, kind of how we're going to regroup customers. Right, how we're going to regroup customers so that then we can make multiple versions of the of our forecast 
um, and kind of game out different 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 outcomes, right? So the first thing I want to want to do, and I've pre-done some of this, obviously, just for speed for presentation, and um, so you're not all just sitting at at home watching me input different pieces of data. Uh, if you go up to this hamburger menu here, one of the things you know, this is something you should see something similar to this. Uh, there's different layouts and things like that for people, and if you've changed, that's fine. Uh, but eventually, one of the things you'll find is this dimensions uh, label. It's under create and manage, and it'll say dimensions. Uh, most of you probably have been in there before, just in case for those of you that haven't and are concerned about how to use this, I'll just go slow. Uh, once we get into the dimensions, this is what you should see. Uh, if you want to get into this, and so the goal of today, what I'm trying to do in my hypothetical situation here is recategorize my customers. So I'm going to go into the dimension that is customer. So I'll just drop this drop down in this particular piece. And for most of you with sweet success, uh, you, this is the customers live inside the relationship dimension. So you want to click on relationship and go into relationship. All right. Right here under TR is that stands for total relationship. By the way, this is the member name and this is the alias. Why it opens so far away, I don't know. You can drag it over here, you shrink this column and see the see the name a little clearer right there. So if we go into total relationship, we'll see we have total customer. Go into total customer, we'll see that we have four categorizations of customers right now. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what they stand for, R, H, M, R, M, I, L, L, I, and M, M, I. Right now, none of that is, is meaningful to me. I want to go in and start recategorizing, recategorizing my customers um, so I can make sense of or try to make some sense of what is going on right now. So I'm just going to expand these customers. Um, I'll be the first to admit I was a little lazy when coming up with today's examples. I only recategorize category one and category two customers. Uh, please forgive me. Um, so getting in here, how are we going to recategorize fast? Quickly recategorize these customers for you know a situation that we hope is temporary, right? Um, that's our goal today, right? And so here's how I I think the best way to do this is. Um, some of this is a matter of opinion, but obviously um, I've been doing this for quite some time, and I think this is the easiest way to do it. Um, unfortunately, when I shrink this, when I shrink this column, I think I shrunk the um, this column here, so our buttons are a little hidden. But if we click on this button. One of the things you'll see is this XYZ piece. And if you hold, hover over it, what that says is custom attributes. And so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna go in and recategorize my customers using a custom attribute that I'm gonna create right now. Now, I've already created mine because I wanted to uh, tag a bunch of customers, but we'll go in and take a look. Come on. Oh, whoops. Um, one of the things is you want to be, sorry, I forgot this, but one of the things is you want to be highlighted on relationship when you do this, excuse me. So to click on relationship and then click on customer attributes, then click here, it'll take you into, these are the attributes for this dimension that we are, we are um, that we can use or create. So right now you'll see in the standard example, we have something set up for sales rep and we, I added COVID impact now if you just to walk through how to create one it's very easy just click this screen plus button and it'll ask you what you want to call it um and i'm just going to call this COVID example i'm just going to ex it so that we can move along but um and then i'll hit save now all that is it says this is going to be a, a set of attributes called COVID ex if you look at my COVID impact piece that i did already you'll see it comes up over here and I can click the little arrow next to it and get the different pieces I put into it. So I can, I'm gonna group my customers by very high impact, high impact, moderate impact, low impact. And for a small subset of customers, I'm gonna actually say that I believe they, they are gonna have an inverse impact, which means that business for them is actually going to pick up um, because it, it does for certain people. 
Um, so if we want to do that here, we click COVID X as an example. Right now, if I click that here, there's nothing there, right? So I'll just click here. And then right here, I have this plus arrow and I can add a child. So just to make things different, I'm going to just give you a couple in, um, examples of adding something. So I'm going to click strong impact. Um, and the nice thing that I want to point out about this also is you, this shows that you can have different modeling examples. So we can use COVID impact tomorrow when COVID impact is completely um, no longer valid, we can start a new one. So, um, or we can reuse it. But if we start strong impact and then here now I have a couple different options. This one would be add child. This is going to be add sibling. I want to add something next to strong impact. So it's a sibling. So I'm going to add that. Um, and I'll put moderate impact. Okay. So I've hit moderate impact. Now I've got two tags. So you get the idea. You can keep adding tags. You can add as many as you'd like. Um, and, and we can go from there. All right. So once that's done, I'm going to hit close. And now I'm going to go back into relationship. And like I said, I've already done this. So I'm going to skip over. I'm just going to show one example of how to do this and then we'll move on. But um, I'm going to go in and pick out my different customers and then I can, I can give them, act, tag them with these attributes to show kind of what I think the impact on, on their business will be. So for instance, right here, sports and outdoor academy. Well, all the schools are closed. So I'm going to say that they're probably closed too, and they're probably going to have a, a very high impact. So if I click over here on my custom attributes, view custom attributes, it'll take me right into this customer's attribute page. And so you can see that I've already tagged them with a very high impact. So here I am, very high impact. And, you know, if I want to tag them with, you know, for my COVID EX example, I can go in here and say strong impact. And then I just click add. Okay. And then save. That customer is now tagged with strong impact. I can go through every one of my customers. Now, the first objection I'm going to hear from a lot of people about this is, wow, I got to go through all my customers and tag them. Yes, you do. Uh, however, the good news about that is, if you were going to model this out in Excel or something like that, you'd basically have to do the same thing. Yeah, you'd have to go through every customer and, and do different things. And, and okay, that's fine. The good news is once this is done, I can reuse it multiple times. I'm going to show you an example of that right now. So I'm going to go through and say, all right, I've tagged all my customers in category one and category two. You're just gonna to have to take my word for it because I think to, to prove it to you would take too long today. Um, the one thing that we're gonna to wanna to do now is important, okay? This is very important, don't forget this step. This is refresh the database. So I'm gonna click on my refresh button. It's gonna ask me if I wanna refresh the database. I'm gonna click refresh. It's gonna run through this cube, this cube refresh process. Okay, this is architecture that's unique to, to uh, the PBCS cloud architecture. Um, all right, I've already broken something, but that's okay because we don't need it for this. Um, anyway, this, these customers are now tagged and we can move on to the next step. So now I wanna start looking at how can I uh, start to use those tags to model different outcomes for my, you know, for my business. So here's my first stab at this, and obviously this is very elementary, but um, we, can, we can build on it from that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, you know what, I'm gonna go into my version dimension. So most people out there today have something like a base, a final maybe, a version one, maybe in this case, this is a demonstration application, so it has a demo version. Um, but what we might want to do is say, hey, I want four new scenario or versions, excuse me. So I want to have COVID best case, middle case, worst case, right? And then I'm going to also create like a mass change or something like that because I want to demonstrate a mass change opportunity. So one of the things we're going to do, if we want to create another version, we can add child or add sibling. So in this case, let's just add sibling, okay? And um, we're going to call it uh, we're going to call it COVID EX based on our tag that we just created. Uh, most of this you can leave alone. It's fine. Just leave that and hit save. 
Oh, already exists. The name has to be unique. I'm sorry. So COVID example. We'll hit save and it's there. The one thing I should have done as for speed of speed of use is uh, I should have done all of these changes and then hit refresh database. So when I hit ref right now, unfortunately, I'm going to have to refresh it again. Uh, and it'll crash where it was, but it should add this piece before it does that. So that'll be fine. Um, so the, uh, the next thing we want to do now that we've got some places to do this different modeling scenarios in, you know, I'm going to use these, these four, but, and maybe at the end, if we have time, we'll go into that COVID example and reuse that. But, but to start with, the first thing I want to do is I want to go to the, um, the hamburger. So what I've done right now is I've created tags for my customers so that I can group them based on the COVID on what's going on what I see the risk to their business as. And then I've created uh, some, some versions where I can remodel the data and change values and store them so that I can analyze them later and look at the impacts across the different areas, right? So now what I'm gonna do is, let's put some data into those, uh, into those buckets. And this is, like I said before, this is gonna be a pretty elementary example, but you can really build on this as you go. So one of the things I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go into this piece. If we go into the hamburger and we go into the actions area and go into copy data. So I'm going to hit copy data and that's going to take me into this screen. And um, I know exactly what every person's thinking of because I've been doing this for 20 years. And every time I show a customer this screen for the first time, they look at it in horror and say, that's too complicated. I just want something easy. All right. So I get it. It looks like a monster. Uh, it's not though. And if we just take a few minutes, like as I said, we're all outside our comfort zone already. Might as well learn something new. So um, if you just take a few minutes to walk through this with me, you'll see that it's really not the the kind of monster you think it will be. Okay, and it actually is excessively powerful tool. And and the power of PB really a lot of it from like modeling, scenario modeling, what if, and all that stuff can be driven right from the screen. So let's go through it. The first piece up here on the left is the plan, is the cube. Everything we're doing today is really kind of be on the high level financials because we just want to get some high level models reforecast and redone so that we can kind of start to, you know, hey, if all of our very high impact customers have no orders tomorrow. What does that look like, you know, or something like that? So, you know, right now we're in desperation mode. Let's let's just do high level. We don't want to rebuild forecasts from the ground up, et cetera. We don't have that time. So right now we'll just start with the planning cube. And then here it's going to, this piece here, oh, sorry, first the copy data options. If you have things that are built up, like what we call supporting detail, or if you have commentary in the application, you can choose, or if you have attachments of like Excel spreadsheets that somebody's done and then attached inside this application, you can copy those over as well. This, it will make the copies that you want. Um, I'm not gonna do that today because this is quick and, and whatnot, but just know that you could if you want. Um, so here, this piece right here, this static dimensions, this piece is, what this means is static, right? Everything is gonna stay the same. So if I'm gonna copy data, from my base version, what, you know, my forecast base, and I'm gonna copy it into, let's say my COVID high impact, COVID medium impact, or best case, worst case, medium case, where, you know, if I'm gonna move all that data, what pieces do I want to remain the same from one version to the next, right? So the first thing I'm gonna say is, you know what, I know I want the accounts to remain the same. And I want all the accounts. I want to bring them all over. So all, you know, from one version to another, I just want all the accounts to move over with the values they have in, right? So from that perspective, let's go here. And, you know, we can, this is gonna, this will, if, if you're not a power user of this system and it, this looks overwhelming, it's really not that bad. And I'll give you some shortcuts. In this example for this stuff where you just want to bring everything over, like all the accounts, et cetera, you know what, just, just click here click this function and you have two choices. Um, I will go with level zero because that's the easiest, but you can bring over all the accounts and all the intermediary steps if you want for accounts, it doesn't make a difference. But if you want to bring over all the pre-aggregated data, just click the sentence inclusive. It'll run a little longer, but I don't think we're quibbling over something that's not worth quibbling at this point in time. 
So I'm going to bring over just the bottom, but you can bring over all of them. And I'm going to hit OK. All right. Then I'm going to go to the next dimension. You know what? I'm just going to bring over all the months in my forecast here. Again, this is a little easy. So in this case, you could do just the total, which is the total year and all the months underneath, or you can just click period. Again, let's just make it easy and take period and everything underneath it, all right, at the bottom level. Level zero just means the very bottom. So if you think of the tree, these are all the leaf nodes. You think of the dimension like a pyramid, it's the bottom level, which will re-aggregate into the whole pyramid. However, you, whatever analogy works for you, that's what we're doing, right? Here for the years, um, one of the things you're gonna to have to forgive me is this demonstration is based in 1819. So I'm gonna bring over 18 and 19, okay? And I'm just gonna select those two, bring them over. So if there's certain pieces you want that are only those two pieces, then just select those alone and bring those, right? There's your years. So now um, scenario, right? We want our forecast. So we wanna make different versions of our forecast. So we're just gonna bring our forecast. Okay, and then, wait a minute, I need more dimensions in my static dimension. There's a little, little plus button over here, so let's just add more. Okay, so here, select uh, version is what we're gonna create multiples of, so let's leave that out for the time being. Currency, right, if you have a multi-currency situation, um, then bring over all of, the, all of them, that's fine. If you only have one, then just bring over one, that's okay. So for here, I'm just gonna bring them all over because this application is actually multi, multi currency, but you know, that's fine. Uh, and then we'll move on. Subsidiary, you know what? We can select something if we want to only bring over certain subsidiaries, but right now I'm just gonna bring them all. Okay. And now, my next one, uh, relationship. Here's where we get. Here's where we're going to throw some curveballs. All right. So for this particular piece, one of the things we want to do is, you know what? Let's go best case scenario. On our best case scenario, what do we want? What do we think? So let's go back to that modeling we're talking about and those tags that we just used. Right. The nice thing about this is the icon's the same. It's that little X, Y, Z, I think with a key or something under it. I don't know, I can't see that well, sorry. But uh, so let's just do this. This is gonna give us a selection of our customers based on the attributes that they have or don't have. In this case, what I'm gonna say is for, you know, things are getting bad from our, for our best case for the coronavirus impact, I'm gonna say that we're gonna get, I wanna bring over the sales as they are for every customer that is not very high impact. That's my best case scenario. So for this piece, I'm gonna say for attribute COVID impact does not equal very high impact. Give me that list of customers. There they are. That's all of them. That's all the customers I've tagged that don't have very high impact. And I'm just gonna click add all. Okay, and then I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to continue on moving down my down my dimension um, for item. Again, I'm just going to bring all the items. So in this particular case, that's I'm just going to bring all the items. If you're a, a company that has supply chain is, potential supply chain issues or something like that, and you only want to bring over these are the only these are the only products we can produce right now. Let's just bring over what we had forecasted for sales to that before we start tweaking. You can do that too. But um, right now, I'm just gonna bring over them all just to make this a little more simplistic. And then I'm gonna bring over all my departments. Okay. And then as I keep going down this line, and I realize this is kind of slow and tedious, but, um, but recopying Excel versions and then you know, and managing that is, is tedious too. Uh, and the nice thing is, I'm gonna show you in a sec, the really nice thing about this is, once we put all this in, until I log out, it will remember everything I've selected. So I can make changes as I go later. So for locations, I'm gonna bring over all my locations. All right. 
And what do I have left here? I have tracker and class because we're going to get to version in a minute. So, you know, again, when in doubt, just bring it all over. It's fine. We can delete stuff that, you know, we can go back and change it later and recopy. It's fine. Um, so I'm going to add the last one is class. So I'm going to bring over all my classes too. Again, if you don't want to bring over everything, you don't have to. Okay, so there's my classes. All right, so there we go. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my version. I'm going to bring from the from the demo version. And, you know, if you're, I doubt most people are using a demo version, but if you're, you know, if you're for those playing along at home, you're probably going to use the base version or the final version, right? So the version's demo in this case, and then I'm going to copy it to. Uh, where am I going to copy this one? What we said was this is my best case scenario. So for this one, I'm going to say for my best case scenario, let's bring it over there. Okay. All right. Then I just hit this button, copy data. And I have now, well, it's going to take a sec, but I'm now copying all of the data from demo version to best case, except for the customers that are of very high impact. Okay, so now for those, and this is really important because if I'm going to go back and reforecast those very high impact customers at new levels, maybe I want to start from scratch, right? And I don't want any, anything. You, you can bring it all over if you want and then go through it, and that's fine. Um, but if you want to just bring it over, because the, the, the idea here is you can mix and match, right? Um, so for instance, now let's do something a little different. So that's for my best case scenario. Okay, now for let's change this and say, you know what? Let's do our middle case now. Oh, man, red bucket here, sorry. All right, so let's do our middle case now. Okay, so we want to go from demo to middle case now. Let's start laying out our middle middle ground case. All right, so for our middle ground case, let's do this. We'll go back to our relationship piece here. We'll open up that up. And now I'll say, you know what, all right, let's change our, I'm just gonna take them all out and let's do this again, okay? So for our middle ground piece, let's start with a base of, you know, our COVID impact base uh, equals, and you know what? So for the middle ground case, I definitely want, all the inverse impact people right those those should definitely be part of my middle case so there they are i only have three of them okay so let's just put all those over all right now let's go back over here and say you know what i also want my low impact people i don't have any low impact people that's not so good okay um now now let's go into my COVID impact and let's say, all right, where's my moderate impact people? Uh, you know what? Something's wrong with my, my filters aren't clearing here. Sorry. Um, well, this is a better example. Let's do this. So here's my here's my inverse impact. So now there's just those three, right? So I'm going to copy the data. And so now I'm moving all of my inverse impact people from demo to COVID middle case. Um, all right, that's done. Now let's go back over here and click this and say, I want all of my, um, now let's say I want all of my, I think I do actually have some low impact. Yeah, there we go. All right, so now I want all of my low impact. All right, so let's bring over all of my low impact people and put this in, right? And, we'll, and now we'll bring all of those over. So now I'm bringing the, a different group of customers into my middle case. And this is where I wanna get into that whole blending of different versions. Because if I have, once I start tweaking the values here, 
and saying, you know, for this customer, you could even go into the idea of once you start modeling out, like here's my best case, worst case, you know, best case, middle case, worst case, for you could do this on a customer by customer level. And then when you start, you can start creating more versions and then bringing in different components as you like. So, you know, here now I've brought in two different sets of customers into the same version that didn't overwrite anything that melded the two together. So now I've got those two melded into that middle case scenario. I can even go back and say, you know what, now I want, um, now give me, now give me uh, COVID impact equals, um, you know, so now we did, we did the inverse and the low, let's do moderate. We'll bring those into the, cause this is the middle case. So we'll bring those in as well, right? So we'll clear that, we'll add in these, there you go. And then we'll copy that data. So now we've brought those in. But the reason we've, we've brought the same data from demo into mid, middle case for those three sets of customers. However, if I wanted to, when I'm changing these sets of customers, I could also change the source and, and bring it from somewhere else. So this is why I think when you talk about like modeling out different scenarios, once you start to tweak the data, I'm doing this because I haven't even started tweaking the data. So I'm just really setting up my base my base cases and then I'm going to go ahead and start messing around with stuff. Right. And I mean, we're going to get to that, I promise. But so that's one thing, but now it just shows like once I start doing that, then I can go back and build on top of what I've already done because I can start pulling different pieces into somewhere else. You know, so if I want the, if I want the moderate uh, impact customers from the, the worst case scenario into my, you know, my new version tomorrow that I create, I can do that. Tomorrow when I wake up, I can create a new version and start pulling different things based on the work I'm gonna do today. And that's where you start to get into some of the different modeling, you know, some of the, it, it makes setting up those initial models, once you've started doing the work, a lot easier. And I can start, you know, mi mixing and matching and melding different pieces together. Um, so one is I've been able to, you know, what we've walked through so far is I've been able to tag my customers, in different sections so I can easily grab them and meld them into different different versions of my forecast. Then I've started to show you the, the ability to mix and match pieces of the different of different forecasts or different versions of the forecast into other versions. Right. So if I wanted to say, you know what, I've already done some work on uh, on my inverse impact. So let's go back to them. Um, you know, I've already gone into my best case scenario for my inverse impact customers, right? So let's go here and, uh, and get our inverse impact customers. And there they are. So I'm gonna add all those over, right? So here you go. And, uh, but you know what? I've already updated those values in my best case, in my COVID best case scenario. So you know what? Let's just pull those values from my COVID best case scenario for that customer segments into my COVID middle case scenario. Um, or, you know, or, you know what, we haven't done our, we haven't done our uh, worst case scenario yet. So, you know what, but we think, you know, they're an inverse impact, which means we've already modeled what we think the impact is on their business is probably not going to change because they're an inverse impact. So, um, you know, it, it, it won't get worse. It'll about roughly stay the same. So we'll pull that over here. You know, and we'll just pull those customers from the best case uh, version of the forecast into the worst case version of the forecast, but we're only taking these three customers. So let's just do that. Okay, so that's been copied. All right, so enough on the data copy. So I think, I hope you're getting the idea of how this is powerful and you can use it to mix and match pieces of different versions to create, you know, complete net new versions and you know, once you like, if you have a customer, you know the outcome already, or something like that. Once you do the work on that customer, you can move them from one version to another version, you know, all the way along the chain without having to redo anything, right? And we just did that. All right, so let's go into something that's a little more pretty to look at. Um, one of the things that we'll go from here is uh, into the forecast, right? So I think most people that have the Sweet Success app have something that's very similar to this. You may have configured it a little bit, made some modifications just for your own, um, 
you know, what you what you're more comfortable with or your preferences, et cetera. But this is essentially what it looks like out of the box. So now let's go over and go into the sales cogs area. I realize I'm really running out of time, so I apologize for that. We, you know, as I said, I'm happy to get on any other time and go through more. But um, let's go into the sales and cogs area. And of course, it's a live demo, so this is going to happen and it's going to run a little slow. <laughs> um, but so let's look at this. One of the things that we've done, and this is something I can get, you know, if you get this application out of the box, you don't have version here as a, as a selection. It's very easy to change, and we can walk through that if, if someone has a question about that, okay? Um, but what we can do here is we can start to model. So you can see that um, here, are, this is by product, so th that's not the end of the world, but I've already started to change these, and we can look at the different versions. But since we're getting closer on, on time, and I did tell people that I would uh, get through a bunch of this stuff. Let's see where we are here. So here is our sa summary sales by customer in COVID, okay? Um, I made a copy of the sales by customer, or summary sales by customer, and, and made a COVID version of it. And basically what I did there is did two things. I, uh, I, I changed the version down here to a selector. And then I also added this little piece at the bottom to give us a total for total sales. So here was my original forecast demo, right? I have sales of, for 19 of $210 million, okay? That's what I did. Now, based on what we just did, let's change this number and go look at our best case. So just by leaving our very high impact customers out of the forecast and saying that their sales go to zero and leaving everyone else the same, let's see what happens. So we choose our, our COVID best case here, and then we hit this little go button or arrow button to take us where the, to that selection, and we didn't get anything, and I'll tell you why. That's because I forgot something. I apologize. First thing we have to do is, since I only took the bottom level of that is, we have to go into rules. Oh, I might even put it on that page. But one of the things we want to do is just add. I'm getting this little error today. I don't know what's going on. Um, is ag select. And so today I want to do the year. And I'm going to do uh, 19 because that's what I'm really interested in today. And then I'm going to do version. And I'm going to do my best case because that's, again, what we're trying to look at right now. Uh, and it's forecast. And then I'm going to launch that. And then while we're here, since we're here, I'm also going to do the same thing for uh, uh, medium case and worst case, right? So we can kind of see where we are. And I have to admit that this did not take this um, this long when I was practicing last night, so I, I apologize. Um, the other nice thing about this is if you um, you can just type in if you know what you are going to do. Uh, you can use the selectors or this, or just type in the value. So we'll do middle case two for 19. And then um, I'll do worst case two just to show you all of that. Um, but this will re-aggregate. And just remember, this is re-aggregating and recalculating every, every product, every Relate, you know, every relationship that we brought over, every de uh, department, etc. So this is, you know, a significant amount. Um, I think that that error I'm getting is to, to do with my browser. Um, I don't know how most people are uh, going through things these days, but I don't think I've shut off my computer in you know, a couple of weeks at least. So I apologize for that. Okay. All right. So let's go back to our let's go back to our summary sales page here by customer. Uh, going to forecast, going to sales by cogs, and uh, we'll get right back into this. Ready? Here we, oh, here we are. So here's our best case. We didn't aggregate FY18. That's why there's no data. But here we are at 102. So wait a minute. Let's just flip this back. When we were here. Just want to get the full impact of this here. Here is our FY1819, 
and our total sales are 210 million. Um, and so when I take out my very high impact customers and do my best case, um, my FY19 sales are gonna drop by more than 50%. If I go back and look at, and look at my middle case, and you'll notice that the number of the customers has decreased, right? Because these are only the customers that were in, included in my, um, oops, sorry, in my um, copy for best case, worst case, right? And again, this is a little bit elementary. You probably, your customers aren't gonna go to zero, but some will, but you know, um, and here now we're down to 91 million. And uh, keep in mind also that that 200, 10 or 230, whatever it is in demo, there were four categorizations of customers and, we, um, and I only re-tagged two, two of the four categorizations. So, you know, obviously I cut out half the customers right off the bat, so that's part of the problem. But anyway, um, so there's my middle case and you'll see just the people we brought over for the middle. So if I go to my worst case and hit okay, here I should only see my inverse customers. So there's really only should be three, right? Well, I only got two. One of them must not have had any sales. So there we go. Um, that's all that came over. But you get the idea of how you can start modeling these things together and picking and choosing and putting those things in, right? Um, and that is uh, a little something I wanted to show you. Now, I want to go back to one of the things I want to do is, you know what, let's, I want to go back in and make some changes in a different way. This was kind of nice and show some, some ways to mix and match some things together. But you know what? I just want to, I don't want to cut out customers. I don't want to do anything. Let's do something different. Okay, and that's fine. Let's do this. Let's go back to our copy data tab, okay? Like I said, everything remains the same. Pretty nice, right? That's why, you know, when you're working in here, this is actually a good thing. Uh, it's a little tedious to fill out at first, I agree, but it's here, right? So now let's do this. Let's bring over all our customers. I'm just gonna do level zero descendants, bring them all over. And then I'm gonna move them all into what I'm calling the mass change version, right? So here I do and bring over the mass change version. And then we'll do that copy. So this is gonna take a sec, but here we go. We'll do that copy and bring them over. And again, um, this takes a second, but it's actually a significant amount of data. So um, we are moving a good bit here because we're moving everything, you know, all currencies, all subsidiaries, all items, all locations. And this model is actually a decent size. So all of that stuff's gonna be moved over and we'll have that. And then what we can do is go in and say, let's change the let's change our thing our uh let's just change our entire thing so what we're going to model in a sec is uh let's just say we're going to put in a 10 percent decrease in sales across the board um, so that's what I, the example i'm getting to here so sorry it took so long but we'll get to that so now if i go in to my forecast go back in here here I am. So I'm going to change from my version. I'm going to go to my mass change version. Okay. So whoop. there we go. Take my mass change version. Here we go. And we're back to our, you know, now we're at 125 minutes. So I must have missed something along the way. But but anyway, we're at 125 minutes. So you know what we want to do this time around is let's do this. Let's run our little business rule here. And uh, we're going to run this mass change rule. We're going to run it for uh, you can use current forecast or you can choose it, right? I mean, the current forecast is actually set to forecast, so that's fine. Current scenario. Um, I'm going to select the version I want, which is going to be our mass change version, right? Hit OK. Um, I'm going to do all months, okay? And then, then there's two other inputs here that we're asking for, right? One is the account. Let's just go and see what account we want to do. And I'm going to go in here. And I'm gonna say, uh, for this particular exercise, and maybe we run it more than once, it's fine. But go into gross profit here, income, total sales. And I'm gonna go in and say, you know what, I wanna do my product revenue, you know, because maybe we have different values for different 
you know, different changes for different ones. So for 4310, I'm gonna, I'm gonna multiply everything basically uh, by 0.9. Actually, you know what, let's do 0 0.85, 0 0.85, okay? So, every, oh, oh, you know, one of the problems is you only need one of these. So let's do 0 0.85 and then uh, let's run this rule. So everything's gonna go down 15%. And what we'll see is that this is gonna come back and give us across the board cuts for that particular account of 15% and give us a way to model our, our projected revenue and see what that does, you know, what's the impact then. And, and you know, the thing that's nice about this is this is all connected. So once we do this and re reduce our, our sales by 15%, we can go run the income statement and see exactly the impact that that's gonna have on our business. Um, we can go to the cap, we can go to the balance sheet and start to forecast how that's going to have an impact on, on our cash flow. Um, you know, some other things that I haven't gotten into today, and I know we're starting to run short on time. I, I, I apologize, but there's a lot to get through. Uh, the, the one of the things that we haven't gotten into is, you know, what about just changing your DSO? Uh, you know, so you can you model out your cash flow. That's really easy. Some of the drivers you want to change. Um, you know, there's this whole thing is driver based, and you can do a lot with things like that. So um, again, this didn't run as long last time I did this, so I apologize. But um, the uh, but you'll see here we go finally. Um, so now we're down to 87 million, and you can open this up. Ah, come on, you can open this up and see that this is the column that was impacted. And, it, and I should have done that first to show you that that was the only one that was impacted and the services revenue wasn't. Now, obviously, um, you know, you're probably going to have the different impact on your services revenue, more or less. Um, but that's just something to keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind here is as we go forward, um, you know, these things, you can start to use this version and remodel some of like this by customer, by product, and then mix and match these pieces back together. So I know I've gone much longer than I originally, and I didn't even get to everything I'd like to cover, but um, I would like to leave some time for questions. So uh, if there are questions, um, can, we, can we look at that? Let's, oops, oops, oops. Um, uh, the only question I see right now is, uh, is this being recorded for future reference? And the answer is yes. Um, so I think we will send out a link. Uh, I believe we're sending out a link to everyone that's registered. So if you gave us a valid email and your registration, you should receive a link to the recorded version of this. Uh, are there any, and, and also one thing I would really, um, love it if people have questions, if, you know, if you'd like to uh, talk about any of this, please get in touch with me. I'm happy to set up another session that's more Q and A based. And I promise I won't talk as much and I'll listen to more questions, but um, I, you know, we can, we can go through that and, and things like that. So let me just, um, let me just get back in here and uh, flash this up here. So people have this. And that is, um, so there you go. So there, the, now you should be able to see the, the contact page with the, um, you know, if you just email us at info at Mindstream Analytics, it'll get to me. Okay, uh, here's a question. Uh, when we categorized into strong and said that you have to go through each customer, can you at least uh, shift click to do two customers or more at the same time? Um, you know what? I wish you could. I'm, I'm sorry to answer that you cannot, um, um, at least not that I know of. Um, the, the other thing that, that really kind of breaks my heart is, uh, I don't know how many of you, you know, change your dimensionality on a regular basis, but one of the things you cannot do is if you use smart view, uh, the smart view add in extension in, in Excel to update your metadata, you also cannot set, um, attribute tags in that you can create attributes in that, but you cannot tag them to the actual members. Uh, so that's kind of a problem too. So I'm sorry about that, but no, you're going to have to go in and tag each one. 
Uh, but I but I do believe that it, you know if once they're tagged, you know especially with the mixing and matching you can do with the copy data that it's it, it's worthwhile. The exercise is worthwhile. Um, you can load them too if you export them and re-import them. Um, and maybe I should have gone through an example of that. But uh, but you can upload dimensions with tags in them. Um, maybe I'll have to do that for another Q and A if people are interested. But. Uh, but you cannot multiple, you cannot like uh, left click or shift click and, and do multiple at the same time. Sorry about that. Okay, is there anyone else? All right, we'll give it another minute or two. But uh, again, if you have questions or ideas of something you'd like to see, please, by all means, um, let me know. Um, let me know and, and would be happy to either do another demonstration or, or do a, a kind of a live Q&A about examples of how to do something or something like that. Um, the other thing that I'll mention is that the, the NetSuite PB team at NetSuite is you know, more than interested in helping people with guidance about how to do things or help them get something working if they don't think it is, uh, et cetera. You know, you're, um, but by all means, um, and this isn't a hard email. If you'd like to reach out to Bernard Ash at NetSuite, his, his email is bash, B-A-S-H at netsuite.com. So, um, and, and again, we'd be happy to help as well. And uh, I think I can actually put that in the chat box so i hope bernard's okay with this but i think he is um so that is bernard's email and if you'd like to email me directly uh here's my email so anybody that's in the chat if you'd like to copy that down please by all means go right ahead okay so um, I know we've run a minute or two over. I apologize, and I apologize for the technical issues at the beginning of this. But uh, thank you all very much for coming, um, and uh, I hope I hope to have a hope to see you all in another webinar. I think the next one we're going to try and do is around, as I mentioned, DSO because there's certain things I didn't get to cover today. Uh, you know, day sales outstanding, days payable outstanding, et cetera, modeling out cash flow and things like that. So stay tuned um, if you're interested in something like that. Thank you very much for coming.